Hey y'all, my name is Suzanne. I am the owner of Dixie Belle Paint Company and I am going to give you a quick tutorial today on how to use, how to paint with Dixie Belle Paint. Uh, first, I paint with a chip brush. These are really my favorite type of brush to use because it doesn't hold a whole ton of paint and um, you don't get a lot of brush marks with it. I also make sure it's a little bit damp because I like a damp brush when I paint. I also have a eight ounce container of Dixie Belle drop cloth. So I'm gonna give it a good shake, open it up, and um, basically slap it on. Uh, the best thing that I like about Dixie Belle is imperfect is perfect. Uh, we're not going for perfection, we're just going for a kind of natural look and um, you don't have to worry about how it's going to dry or finish up because we're also going to be doing something after this, the glazing, to uh, take care of the curves and, and really bring out some details. But first of all, you've got to get the paint on and you can see that I'm just taking a little bit onto my brush and just putting it on. It covers really well and uh, I think what I'll do is I will finish this up and come back when I'm done. All right, so now we are finished or I'm finished with the chair. I've done two coats. Um, it took me maybe half an hour to do. Uh, they dry, the coats dry really fast too. De depending on the temperature, you can be dry in about 20 to 30 minutes. Obviously mine was dry a lot quicker because I'm in warmer weather. Um, I also wanted to let y'all know that I always do keep uh, a little bowl of water because like I said, I like to keep my brush damp. So just to dip it and then some paper towels too. We also have two other types of brushes that are actually really good paint brushes. This is the medium round brush that we have and this holds a lot of paint. It doesn't get all um, dried up in there and this is the small round which I really like too. It's, it's good in your hands. Uh, this uh, will really, if you have a large dresser or something like that, this will do a really good job and get it done fast. Uh, I don't think, is Terry, do you have any? Uh, one thing I want to know is how much paint does it take to paint a chair like that? Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, this is, I started, you saw me open this jar and this, it's finished now. I don't know if y'all can see that. It's uh, about a fifth of a jar okay. with two coats that it took me to do. So, and it, and it covers really well as you can see. And um, so what I'm going to do next is, uh, my next video is going to be with distressing and that and that kind of stuff to get that kind of uh, sh shabby chic look or uh, rustic look. So, uh, hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is the chair that we just painted and so now I'm going to go over some distressing techniques and different things that you can do with Dixie Bell paint to get that rustic uh, shabby chic look. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about here are the sanding sponges. I know that uh, I've talked to some of y'all about that and this is what a sanding sponge looks like. It's basically a sponge and it's got sandpaper on it. What I really like about this is it's easy to hold first of all and it's easy to work around the corners. This is a 220 grit and so basically this will sand your piece and just kind of smooth it out and you'll get that nice smooth feel um, after you've done painting. This isn't really something that you're going to use to uh, distress, to get the corners and edges looking worn or anything uh, like that. This is more for getting a nice smooth finish and kind of burnishing the paint out. Um, and, and doing that. So what I like to use is something a little bit with a, a heavier grit to distress. This is 150 grit. Um, they have the sanding sponges in that too, but I'm out of those. So I've got just the sandpaper. Uh, basically the way to sand and distress is 
just on the edges, gently or not so gently, work where there would be rubs and um, wear on the chair, on the high points, uh, at the bottom, and then on the back here, and you can see how you can sand it, and then the wood comes through. And that's how you would work it and get that shabby, distressed, rustic look. Now the higher or the lower grit number you've got on your sandpaper, the grittier it's going to be. So you're going to get, uh, it's going to distress a lot more quickly and all of that. So remember the lower the number, the higher the, the distress factor that you'll get. So if you want something that's more distressed, maybe you'll do 100 less distress. Um, I was using that 220 and uh, that's the way the sandpaper works. So I'm going to finish this up, distressing it and getting it all smoothed out. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll show you some glazing techniques because I know there's a lot of questions about that. So we'll see you soon. Hello, welcome back y'all. I wanted to uh, show you the, the distressed chair that we just finished before we start the glazing, but we, you can see that it's, we just lightly distressed it. And uh, also I wanted to let y'all know that it's a really soft after you've uh, sanded it down and, and it feels really, really nice. Now you don't have to clear coat or glaze or do anything like that. Um, once it cures in about seven days, you, it, it'll be fine. You can wipe it down with a wet cloth, whatever you'd like to do, and it's not going to come off. Um, but a lot of people do like to glaze and clear coat, which is what we're going to be showing you now. So right now we've got our one of our best sellers, the Grunge Glaze, which is a really pretty um, dark gray, black, brown color. You can see it right there. Probably doesn't look that color in the jar or under these lights, but that's what it is and you'll see that. So I have just my regular chip brush again and I do like to, I do like my brushes damp. So especially the chip brushes, they just hold the paint a little bit better for me. So I've got it damp, and then I, you know, put it in, wipe it off, and I dip it into the paint. As you can see, there is very little glaze on there, very little. And I'm going to just work in here, and you can see there we're putting it in, kind of working it in, into the corners everywhere. I'm putting a little bit more on and working it in and you can see how it's changing the color of the paint giving it a little more richness and a little more wear not everybody likes the look a lot of people like the nice white which is fine but if you want to bring out some definition in the carvings and in your pieces this is a great way to do it. So I'm getting it in there. And you can see I'm not doing it. We had little technical difficulty. Sorry for the little glitch. Anyway, so I am just filling this in and there we go, like that. So then what I'm going to do is I just have a paper towel. You can use a cloth, you can use whatever you want, but I'm just using a paper towel. And then I just simply dab it off and wipe it and dab and wipe. And you can see I did it a little bit more here, but it's changing the tone of the paint 
and kind of getting into the nooks and crannies. And up here, just kind of wiping it down a little bit. And you just work with it and play with it and just get it to how you like it to look. There really is no right or wrong way. It's just something that you play with and have fun with. Remember, imperfect is perfect. Don't worry about it because the great thing is if you don't like this, let's say you do it and you're like, oh, I hate it. First of all, I would suggest you walk away and come back because typically it's not as bad as you think it is. But you can just paint right over it. So it's really not a problem. So if you come back and you really hate it, paint over it. It's not a big deal. You can also layer this after this dries. It'll take about an hour to dry till it's not tacky and um, then layer it. Maybe you want to get some more in here and up there and all. Layer it, have fun with it. You don't have to just put one coat on, put other coats on. But that's the easiest way I can describe to you the glaze and how the technique is. Uh, you just put it on. If you want to leave it on, leave it all on. Take some of it off, but just um, make it your own. So I hope that helps. Hi everyone, I'm Tracy from Refurbish in the Middle. I'm here today because I'm so excited to show you one of the products from Dixie Bell Paint Line, which I'm a retailer of, proud to say. Today I want to show you a product that is crazy easy, our Easy Peasy Spray on Wax. Okay. Today I'm going to use Dixie Bell Barn Red and Dixie Bell Plum Crazy, which I've got two parts Plum Crazy, one part barn red and I've made this beautiful color that I've already painted on my board. But not to get ahead of ourselves, I'm going to, I decided to go ahead and use these boards, these are cedar planks that um, I get from my wood mill shop here where I live and um, you can do a quick, a uh, quick um, sanding on it. Or the good thing about um, Dixie Bell paint is you don't have to sand at all. So I have sanded my board and I've also put on two coats of the paint that I mixed up. And one other thing I wanted to mention too is Dixie Bell has 35 beautiful colors to choose from that you can use singularly, you can mix, you can match. Um, you, the, the possibilities are endless your creativity can just flow. Okay, so back to the piece. I'm gonna take this piece that I've already finished. I have two coats of uh, the paint on here. And I'm going to take this, let me flip it this way. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna give it a light sanding here. Okay, okay. see really light. And then you're going to take your wax and you're going to shake this up. And I'm telling you, I have never used anything so easy as this wax. Okay, you just take your wax, spray it on, okay? And um, get your rag, which I got a little rag here. You want to rub it in, rub it in and rub it around. So, you know, you got a nice, nice even coat here. Now this takes approximately 30 minutes to dry. Um, you can add a second coat at, um, in an hour and it takes six hours for it to completely cure. I don't know can, if the camera, I hope the camera's picking this up. Um, this is your wax side and this is your unwax side. And it's as simple as that. And you, your furniture, it's as simple as that too on your furniture, very easy. Here's a little piece we made this morning, and we used the color, and we used the Easy Peasy Wax. We made a little coat rack, and um, there's just nothing more I can say about it. It's Easy Peasy. Don't be afraid to try anything. Just jump right in and do it. 
with this paint, I'm telling you, you cannot make a mistake. All right, everybody. I'll see you the next time. Hey, everyone. everyone. Bye. I'm Tracy from Refurbish in the Middle. I'm here today because I'm so excited to show you one of the products from Dixie Bell Paint Line, which I'm a retailer of, proud to say. Today I want to show you a product that is crazy easy, our Easy Peasy Spray on Wax. Okay. Today I'm going to use Dixie Bell Barn Red and Dixie Bell Plum Crazy, which I've got two parts Plum Crazy, one part Barn Red. And I've made this beautiful color that I've already painted on my board. But not to get ahead of ourselves, I'm gonna, I decided to go ahead and use these boards, these are cedar planks that um, I get from my wood mill shop here where I live. And um, you can do a quick, wa a quick um, sanding on it. Or the good thing about um, Dixie Bell paint is you don't have to sand at all. So I have sanded my board and I've also put on two coats of the paint that I mixed up. And one other thing I wanted to mention too is Dixie Bell has 35 beautiful colors to choose from that you can use singularly, you can mix, you can match. Um, you, the, the possibilities are endless. Your creativity can just flow. Okay, so back to the piece. I'm gonna take this piece that I've already finished. I have two coats of uh, the paint on here. And I'm going to take this, let me flip it this way. I'm going to take it, I'm going to give it a light sanding here. Okay. okay. See, really light. And then you're going to take your wax and you're going to shake this up. And I'm telling you, I have never used anything so easy as this wax. Okay, you just take your wax, spray it on, okay, and um, get your rag, which I got a little rag here. You want to rub it in, rub it in and rub it around. So, you know, you got a nice, nice even coat here. Now, this takes approximately 30 minutes to dry. Um, you can add a second coat at, um, in an hour and it takes six hours for it to completely cure. I don't know if the camera, I hope the camera's picking this up. Um, this is your wax side and this is your unwax side. And it's as simple as that. And you, your furniture, it's as simple as that too on your furniture, very easy. Here's a little piece we made this morning and we used the color and we used the easy peasy wax. We made a little coat rack and um, there's just nothing more I can say about it. It's easy peasy. Don't be afraid to try anything. Just jump right in and do it. With this paint, I'm telling you, you cannot make a mistake. All right, everybody. I'll see you the next time with another one. Hi, everybody. Bye. It's Dawn. Listen, I have this mirror. It's got a gold frame on it, and it is about five foot tall. So what I'm doing is I'm going to use my Dixie Belle paint today, and I'm actually got part of it already painted. Um, I'm using Dixie Bell drop cloth paint, and then I will use their clear coat on this mirror, and then I am going to glaze it with Van Dyke glaze. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this mirror with painting, and then I'm going to clear coat it, then I'm going to put on the Van Dyke. So once I get it completely painted, then I will come back and show you how I did that the next process. Alright everybody, I got my frame painted. I used the uh, Dixie Bell drop cloth paint and the uh, Dixie Bell dried sage. And once I had it painted, I used a satin clear coat and clear coated it. Now I want to turn around and I want to glaze it, so I'm using some of the uh, Van Dyke glaze to do that. Now it's important to me to totally clear coat it first because that way if I make any mistakes it won't matter because I'll be able to wipe them right off. Now what I do is I'll take this little brush and I'll dip it into here and then I'll take and come out to the edge and I'll just 
rub this in and once I have it you know rubbed in so that it's good and in the creases right where I want it you know you're gonna have the excess there but that's not a problem that's why I uh, clear coat it first after I do that then I'll take a damp paper towel and I'll just wipe and where I don't want it I wipe that right off and if there's a spot where I can't get with uh, my wet paper towel I just will take a q-tip and I run it in there because I don't want too much of a build up in there I just want just enough to keep this kind of a delicate type mirror and then once I have that spot done then I'll dip again I'll move over to another spot you know I do little little areas at a time because I don't it dries so fast all of Dixie Bell products dry really fast so a project that with most paints would take a few days really you can have completed in a day pretty simple and they have uh, I do believe it's nine different glazes you can choose from they have 35 different paint choices you can choose from so there's there's something there for everybody but like I said you just wipe it till you get the look you're wanting you know I kinda just want it to be a little delicate still like I said if you get where you can't get in it with your towel that's okay use a q-tip q-tips uh, come in very handy on these projects but now I'm hoping you can see that and you'll be able to see the difference between the finished side and the not finished side well I hope that helped you and keep in mind always I suggest that you do a clear finish before you start your glazing it makes it much easier to uh, manage and handle well that's it for now happy painting all right I wanted to show you the completed mirror like I said it's about five foot tall but I think it finally looks uh, better getting new life added to it very easy peasy to use Dixie Bell products hi everybody it's Sally here and I'm going to show you how you can use Dixie Bell chalk and mineral paint to dry brush a piece of furniture this technique is very easy it is very quick because you end up doing one coat and it will also give you the look of the wood because you're not covering it with paint. You're going to use a very small amount of paint so that you can still see some of the wood which gives it that old kind of chippy kind of distressed look but you don't have to sand. Okay, so we've got our wooden chair here, which I have cleaned just with a damp paper towel. And I've chosen Midnight Sky, which is a beautiful black. And we're gonna shake it. And I'm just using cheap old chip brush. But when you are painting the dry brush technique, you want to keep hardly any paint at all on your brush. So I've not dipped in, I, I don't have a ton of paint there, I just have a little bit on the tips. If you've got too much, you can you know wipe some off. And we're just gonna keep moving and get a little bit of color on this piece of furniture. We can always add more paint, but we wanna start with just a little bit. Okay, I'm out of paint, so I'm just gonna go back in, dab just a tiny bit more on my brush, 
get ready to go for it. And I'm getting just a little bit of this color on a little bit at a time. But this technique is much quicker than doing two coats of paint and sanding. It gives you a similar look because I can still see some paint and some original wood. It's just a little bit different technique. Every now and then with the chip brush you're going to lose a little fiber, a little piece of the brush. So just like I did right there. If you're looking for that, But when you're using such little amount of paint, you don't have to worry about looking for drips. This gives it kind of a look of old paint. So when I'm done with this, I'm not going to wax it or clear coat it. I'm gonna leave it that old colored look. And I'm just going to keep painting like this around the chair. Even when you think your brush, brush is completely dry and doesn't have any paint on it, keep moving it. You'll see that there is still some color left on there to get on your chair. I'm gonna go ahead and do the seat. It's gonna give you a little bit of an uneven look. So if you're not a fan of this, then you'll wanna go ahead and um, completely cover it. So you can start out trying the dry brush technique and if you don't like how it looks, go back with a full paint brush full of paint and do your whole piece. From there you can distress it or just leave it solid painted. There's lots of different looks you can achieve. Okay, so I'm all done. This only took a few minutes. It dries very quickly with such little paint on there. So um, if you get too much somewhere, maybe you want to sand that back down. Um, I think I'm done with the look and I'm not sealing it again. So I'm just going to give this a week to cure and it will be ready to go on a porch or anywhere that you'd like to set this piece. Hi everybody, it's Sally, and I want to share with you today just a few tips on using Dixie Belle mineral paint on furniture, especially chairs. I picked up a set of four chairs. They're beautiful uh, cherry, and I'm not going to sand or anything. I just went ahead and painted. I did two coats on the bottom legs, but I asked some of the retailers about the spindles because that takes a long time to paint all these spindles. So I got a tip from Claire at Baby Bee Antiques in North Carolina. And she said, put a glove on your hand, like a latex or plastic or vinyl glove, cleaning glove, and then find a sock. And we're just gonna dip our hand in the sock. I'm not gonna get a ton. And I'm gonna paint my spindle using my sock. So as you can see, this goes quicker than using a brush with all of the strokes and that. I just wanted to share some of the tips that I've been getting from some of the Dixie Belle retailers. Another idea from Mike in Alabama from Just Repurposed says, go ahead and save your Dixie Belle lids 
and put them under your furniture legs, which is also a genius idea. So I really like our jars because you can see the paint. The actual color you're gonna get is what you see right here. Um, some paints, you, you can't see the actual paint and you need tools to open the can. These are just nice screw off lids. This paint is made by some wonderful people down in Florida, but you can find um, a retailer near you by going to DixieBellPaint.com. So what I'm going to do is I've decided that I'm going to distress, which means just take a little bit of the paint off these chairs and uh, you can use sandpaper or wet cloth, but Dixie Belle, most of the retailers carry these sanding sponges, which actually is my favorite because you don't get a lot of mess. You have the sanding on one side, but they're wet, and that takes care of any of the dust, and you get a nice little distressed look. So I'm gonna work on these chairs. I wanted to share um, the sock technique on the spindles and a couple of the other tips that I've, I've picked up we can protect this paint with two types of clear coat, a satin or gloss finish, or if you like to wax, we have a spray wax that you just spray on and wipe clean. So I hope you enjoy the products.